For more on this issue, I want to bring on Jennifer Franco, an anchor and reporter here at One America News. So, Jennifer, you're on the congressional beat here. This is another bill, the fourth, I believe, bill that is going to try to provide relief to the American people during this very hard time. But the contents, once again, are being in dispute, and not only by Republicans, but Democrats as well. But before we get to that, what's in this bill? Yeah, so Alex, first and foremost, this is essentially going to set up the conversation among congressional lawmakers. It's really just a starting point for, a starting point for these negotiations. It's a $3 trillion a relief bill, like you mentioned. It's more than 1,800 pages long. And it's another attempt for Congress to give Americans that are struggling amid these times some more economic relief, but it's all temporary. So how this breaks down, a big chunk of that $3 trillion, $1 trillion of that is going to go to things that we saw in the CARES Act. So this is called the HEROES Act. Hmm. And so what we're going to see in this bill is uh, they're asking for another direct deposit payment to Americans that are eligible, the $1,200 $1, checks that a lot of people are still waiting for, mind you. Um, it's also going to expand unemployment insurance through next January. It, it's, it offers state and local government of officials with assistance things like that. Also mm -hmm. hazard pay for healthcare workers on the front lines of this. So that's sort of like the meat and the potatoes, the, the bulk of this bill. What, right. And I think that makes a lot of sense. There, of course, with a bill like this, you are going to get things that are very appealing to the American worker. In addition to the health care workers, those are people that we need to take care of. But of course, there are different things in there that some would call poison pills that would prevent Republicans from necessarily being on board with this. In fact, I saw Rick Scott use a graph before. So it's likely to be cause some upset things uh, on Capitol Hill. The GOP likely won't be on board with this. I realized you can't even see what I'm doing right now. So you're going to have to bear imagine. with me. I can only imagine by the sound of your voice. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good drawing of the situation. But when it comes to the GOP response, too, they're likely not going to be on board with this, correct? Yeah, pretty much it's dead on arrival. Uh, Republicans, a lot of uh, Republican leaders, Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, they've already said, uh-uh, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Basically, they're taking issue with the fact that their calls for some sort of liability protection for small businesses isn't being answered at all. Hmm. They're unhappy with the fact that they've been asking for this ever since the last stimulus bill was approved, and Democrats haven't really been budging on this. Uh, Mitch McConnell said that it's aspirational. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's bill is aspirational, but it's not rooted in reality. And ultimately, Republicans and the White House are in lockstep with this, and they're saying, let's pause on sending out more aid, temporary aid. Let's see how past aid plays out. And in the meantime, let's work on helping those businesses so that employees have work to return to because essentially what they're worried about is that a lot of these businesses, small businesses in particular, are going to start facing lawsuits as the economy starts opening back up. And Republicans want to make sure that these businesses are protected from those lawsuits so that they don't end up bankrupt and a lot of these workers don't have a place to go work after this is all said and done. And I think one thing actually to the Democrats credit on this effort is that it forces Republicans then to come up with a response. I mean, it's a very politically sour thing to say, we don't want to give the American people $1,200. We don't want to give frontline workers right now assistance. We don't want to provide financial relief to American workers. I have to say it on this show every day until it gets taken care of. There are American citizens that are going hungry right now. Some of them are not getting paychecks. Many don't know how they're paying rent next month. It's a very scary thing. The government is responsible for taking care of that. Uh, because this is something that is being brought on by the government. So I have to bring that up. But there are also objections by progressives on this issue. And I think that's very interesting because House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has had a contentious at times relationship with the more progressive wing of the party. Can you speak a little bit as to that? Yeah, so what's interesting about this round of negotiations with this particular bill is what Speaker Pelosi and a lot of the Democrat leaders did, they did address some of the progressive concerns that were raised by Representative Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, for example. So they did touch on things like, uh, you know, expanding that $1,200 stimulus check to illegal immigrants that pay taxes, uh, to college students between the ages of 17 and 24. So really going after that, a small portion of the electorate or growing portion of the electorate, mind you, that the progressives are trying to appeal to. But they're unhappy with the fact that it falls short on a number of other areas. Like, for example, they didn't expand uh, Medicare. So Representative Jayapal from Washington essentially pointed out that everyday Americans are losing their jobs and with that they're losing their health insurance. So 
where yeah. are these Americans is the question they're raising. Where are these Americans going to get their paychecks? So there's no paycheck a guarantee. Right. There's no Medicare expansion. These are things that progressives are still pushing for. And at the same time, they're highlighting the fact that there are provisions, for example, that they're not happy with, uh, such as extending the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, to lobbyists, yeah. to corporate lobbyists. So that's right. big business. They're not happy with that. So no, and they want to see it change. And to be clear about what you're saying right now, too, I think it's something that needs to be exposed a little bit more, is that it's lobbyists for lobbyists right now that are pushing their bit way into this bill. They say that if lobbyists can't get uh, go to work, if they're not getting their paychecks and stuff like that, they can't help write the legislation for the lawmakers who are supposed to be doing that anyway. I think it's something that's a little bit interesting, a little bit cyclical, if you will. But Jennifer Franco, thank you for coming on today, breaking on the status of this bill as we move forward. Thank you.